Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, where's my brethren all around the world watching this video? Hope you're having a great day today. As you're tuning in, make sure you do yourself a damn favor and hit that subscribe button. And surely you will not be disappointed. Now, this video right here is dedicated to my pops, my dad Nelson. So big shout out to my dad. Um, because we talk boxing a lot. Anytime I see my dad, we talk boxing all the time. You know, for those of you who see my dad, you know, on the hangouts and videos, you know, he's 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 the GOAT. He's TBE. He's the real TBE. He's people champ, my dad. But um, you know, he's a massive fan of Luis King Kong Ortiz. And his man, this man is always in my ear talking about how Luis Ortiz is this and how Luis Ortiz is that. And I, I try to tell him, I'm like, look, at one point in time, Luis Ortiz probably maybe like four years ago in 2015, he, he might have just been the most skilled heavyweight in the world. But time has passed, and and, and and he showed me what I needed to see in that Wilder fight to make this assessment. And then here, here we go. You know, he's he to me, as far as Luis Ortiz, he is done at the elite level of heavyweight box. He is done. And when I say elite, I'm talking about, you know, as far as can he beat those guys like, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder in a rematch. You know, could he beat those guys? And the answer to me is no. The answer for me is no. And I'll give I'll give you guys my reasons why. Okay, we'll start with his most recent performance. You know, he fought a guy in uh, Christian Hammer. Who, you know, Christian Hammer. And for those of you who are up on your head, up in your heavyweight boxing, or you know, Christian Hammer is a guy that uh, has has a good amateur background. Has uh, you know, he's been around the block to to, to say the least. You know, he's a, he's a guy who has fought big heavyweight names, beat some, some names in the division. Uh, you know, like, for example, I I, the, I know Christian Hammer most before this fight for fighting to, uh, Tyson Fury. He was Tyson Fury's last fight before Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko. And and Fury stopped him in the eighth round, knocked, knocked him down in the fifth. Okay? This this same Christian Hammer, you know, has been in other fights where guys like Marius Walk have stopped him. You know, in his pro debut, a guy by the name of Robert Greger, who only had like three more fights after that, stopped him. So this is a guy that's been, he's been stopped by fighters of all calibers from all levels, from your uh, champion, from your linear heavyweight champions, to your contenders, to your guys who didn't even really have a career like that, you know, to your just whatever run-of-the-mill fighter. So for me, I was looking for a statement from Luis Ortiz because, you know, and, and, he, and he was talking about, having a statement, making a statement as well, you know, like, and to me, when he fought Christian Hammer, he did not, he wasn't able to make that statement. Uh, Christian Hammer was early in the fight, uh, just kind of sitting on the ropes looking for the right-hand counter. In the second round, he actually hit Ortiz, I think it was second round, he hit Ortiz with a, with a right-hand counter, and it actually buzzed Ortiz a little bit. And um, one thing I'm starting to notice with Ortiz is he's very susceptible to the right hand. Because he holds his left hand a little low, so if you can time him the right way, in between his jabs and you know him moving in and out, you can land a counter on him. And, and Hammer did, did that, and Hammer was able to find a home for that right hand all night long. You see what I'm saying? So my thing was, I was telling my dad as we were watching the fight, I said, "Look, Dad, I th look, pops, I think Ortiz is still a good heavyweight. I think he can still beat certain guys in the top ten, but as far as the elite, I think he's done. And I think I even told my dad before the uh, when the first round started, I said, "Look." Ortiz is good, but I think he he lacks at this point in his career. He lacks that extra bit of quality to stop a guy like Christian Hammer, and I think he's fighting to go to the cards and get a, uni a unanimous decision. And that's exactly what happened. We saw a guy in Ortiz who was placing his punch as well, was going to the body a little more, but he just lacked that extra bit of quality to get a guy like Christian Hammer out of there. And it's very worrying for me because Hammer is a guy that was made to order for Ortiz, and he failed to stop him. So with that being said, I think he's done. At the, I, I think he's done at the elite level. When he fought Wilder, here's another reason why I think he's done. When he fought Wilder, that was his chance to stake his claim at the elite level to to get a foothold on the division by capturing the WBC heavyweight title. And he had Wilder hurt many a times early in that early in that fight. Um, and you saw him just head hunting, just looking to throw punches to the head. But what he what he should have been doing is he, he should have making those investments to the body. And then work your way back up to the head and then mix it up, mix up your attack. And had he done that, you know, Wilder doesn't have the strongest legs in the world. But he was able to, to, to stay on his feet longer as the fight won because Ortiz did not make those investments to the body early on. And then I mentioned the left hand. He, he's a southpaw, so he holds the left hand a little bit low. And if he's not moving at an angle, because if you go watch the fight, uh, the first, like, five rounds, Ortiz is doing what he's supposed to do. He's jabbing, moving side to side, 
laterally giving him angles. But as the fight wears on and father time kicks in and fatigue kicks in and exhaustion kicks in, then you see him following Wilder in straight lines. And his hands are already kind of low. So what this is for Wilder is, you know, it, it gives Wilder that opportunity to, to land that first knockdown of the fight, which was a, a right hand over the top while going backwards, which, you know, they say he's always heavyweight champion, but last time I checked, you need to be able to have skills to land a punch like that. And he was able to land it on Ortiz. And um, that moment right there was kind of when I when I knew uh, Ortiz was not a, a truly, uh, you know, ready for that elite level. He's not at that elite level. And the, his last fight confirmed it that much more. Now, to be fair to Ortiz as well, you know, he was also, you know, he's been fighting very active. You know, he's fought since July. He's fought three times. Um, three times he's fought since July, fighting um, Razvan Kajunu, stopped him, fought Travis Kaufman, stopped him, fought Hammer and went around. So maybe for him he wanted the rounds, but he was talking about making a statement. I was looking forward to a statement against a guy in Hammer who, um, you know, has, has literally been stopped by every level of fighter, uh, from lineal champions to contenders to nobodies. And he was unable to do that because I believe he lacked extra bit of quality. So do, do I want to see a, a Luis Ortiz fight with Joshua or Tyson Fury, I mean, look, if, if, if those guys run options, great, but he's not beating them guys. He's not. I, I'm, he's not beating them guys. Straight up. As for Dillian White, you know, I think Ian White at this point would stop Luis Ortiz via left hook. And then it's, and then it's like, if you look at the Ring Magazine top 10, right? He's currently ranked number five, and the guys right below him are Alexander Povetkin and Joseph Parker. And, and, and quite frankly, the only reason they're below him is, is because they they both lost their last big fights. Um, but they've also be, they both fought the creme de la creme of the division. You know, Parker fought White, he fought Joshua, Povetkin fought Joshua. They both lost. Ortiz has not fought anybody since he since he lost to Wilder. He's fought Kajunu, Kaufman, and uh, Christian Hammer. You know, Cannon fodder. Um, gatekeeper type of opponents that you should be to get to the next level. And um, it's it's a per just the perfect hand-picked opponents for him. Um, but is he really better? Than, is he really that much better than Pavekin or Parker? Like, would, would you favor him in a fight against Pavekin or Parker? I think those fights are, are, are kind of even, straight up. I think those fights are kind of even because um, Parker, for, for, for what he lacks in being, you know, sometimes he doesn't throw enough punches. You know, he's still someone that has a good work rate. Um, a good chin, durable. And I think I think the biggest thing for Ortiz, uh, you know, the biggest thing anybody could have over him, aside from power or boxing skills, is durability. If you have durability and you can punch a little bit, you can beat Luis Ortiz. And that, Parker is definitely durable enough, and he's definitely got enough punching power to beat Luis Ortiz. But Becca has enough punch power to beat Luis Ortiz. You know, I, I, Adam Konaki, I think, would be a stylistic nightmare for Luis Ortiz. Um, because of the, of the not just the, the punch output, but the but the power with the, that he throws the punches with, um, the improvements he makes. You know, he's he's very he's got a very good gas tank on him. You know, I would I would say that Gerard Miller would have a good chance against Ortiz. You know, there I would honestly say that the only two heavyweights in the top ten I would favor, I, I would put even give Ortiz a chance at this point are are are, are Miller and and maybe. Uh, Maybe a Pulev because Pulev is not known for being a big puncher and he's old himself. So I would say maybe Miller, Pulev, and uh, Parker if if he's able to establish range early on and and, and get Parker to become gun shy. But then eventually, Father Town kick in, Fatigo kick in, and, and Parker will probably uh, notice that and be able to capitalize on that. So, you know, I think what he's done at the elite level, um, you know, was he a very good heavyweight at one time? Absolutely. You know, it's a shame he didn't get a chance to fight. Because at that point in time, I thought he may have just been the most good heavyweight on the planet. But, you know, Father Time gets the best of all of us. Um, I don't think he's an elite heavyweight anymore. And, um, you know, as for who he might fight next, you know, I think that ideally the next fight for him, big fight for him, should be someone like Dillian White. Um, I know he, I know Dillian White supposedly is supposed to fight in the U.K. in June or July, I think. So uh, I'd like to see Ortiz fight him because I, I believe Ortiz is supposed to be a free agent soon. So... That can make sense, and you know I want to see it because that, that's a fight me and my dad constantly talk about is Ortiz versus Dillian White, and Dillian White moved a lot in the last two years. Uh, his left hook is probably one of the most destructive punches in the heavyweight division. I'll put it right just, just just right behind Wilder's right hand, straight right hand as as, as the second most destructive punch in the entire division, and um, I could I would definitely see him catching Ortiz in the middle to later rounds with with something really nasty and vicious. So. 
that's that, that, that's my take on Ortiz right now, where he's at, and just his last performance against uh, Christian Hammer. I just think he lacks the actually the quality to to, to truly uh, be with the, the, the top elite heavyweights like the Wilders, like uh, the Anthony Joshua's, the Tyson Furies, those guys that people want to see him with. Even a guy like Dillian, Dillian White, I, I, I would struggle to see him uh, beating, but. You guys have another comments down below. What do you think about Luis Ortiz and just where he's at in his career? Do you think he's still an elite fighter, an elite heavyweight? Some people say, I've heard people, a lot of people, a lot of people say he was never an elite heavyweight. You know, all he people was Bryant Jennings and and, and 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 those guys. So, you know, you just leave your comments down below. I'll read them. Take the time to subscribe. Like I said, every single one of my videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.